Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. This episode is Lesson 31 of our look at the book of 2 Corinthians. In the last episode, we covered 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 13. And in this episode, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. And the episode will be titled, Paul Calls for Repentance. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 14. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for their parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you, nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent to you? I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk we not in the same spirit? Walk we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would. And that, I, <clears throat> and, that I sh uh, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not, lest there be debates, envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults, and lest, when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Paul here is calling on the Corinthians to repent, before he comes again. Paul doesn't want to have to deal with that when he comes. He says, I will though, if you don't. There were things among the Corinthians that they had done that needed repenting of. We know of the things in the first letter, but it appears from the writing of this letter that they corrected those things. But they were accepting Judaizing teachers that bring them back to the law of Moses. That was wrong. They were accusing Paul of being something that he wasn't. Again, slander is wrong. Lying is wrong. Paul calls on them to repent of their actions. He identifies the fact that he is coming again. Remember, at the beginning of the book, they were complaining that he didn't tell the truth. He said he was coming, and then he wasn't coming. Paul told them of the change in circumstance, but he says, I am coming now. And again, he is not going to be a burden to them. He is not going to take their wages. He is not seeking their money. He is seeking their souls. Now, at the end of verse 13, he said that he asked them to forgive him that the fact that he didn't take their money. But he wasn't saying that he was wrong, but they perceived he was wrong. Maybe Paul didn't tell them the reason why he wasn't going to be burdensome. He does here. He said, there's a reason I'm not going to be burdensome to you, that his relationship to them is similar to that of a parent and child. It is usual for the parent to provide the child in infancy, not the other way around. We don't expect our seven-year-old to go out and provide for the family. The parents are to provide for the children. That's how Paul views them. He views them as his spiritual children. He says, I'm not going to take wages of you. I'm not going to be burdensome to you. He said, it wasn't wrong for me not to do that either. But... I also don't want you uh, to be uh, to have that to provide a stumbling block for you, so I'm going to explain myself as to why I'm not going to do that. Paul reminds them that he loves them and would do anything for them. He also tells them that neither he nor anyone he has sent to them has take advan had taken advantage of them, not him or Titus. He also explains Paul's. Uh, he also explains his purpose. Paul's purpose of making his defense was not to make them the judge of the matter, or even to make himself right in their eyes, but to show that he was right in God's eyes, and thus they should listen to his teachings. Remember what 1 Corinthians 14.37 says, If anyone thinks he is spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul again is saying, I am doing right in the sight of God. 1 Corinthians 11 says, Be ye imitators of me as I am of Christ. Paul's an imitator of Christ, and he says, I'm an imitator of Christ, therefore follow me, not because I'm me, 
but because I'm following Christ. The result of the defense was to build them up. He says, I'm doing this to edify you. I'm doing this to build you up. I'm doing this uh, so that you realize that you need to repent and return to Christ. And he wanted to do this so that when he came, he wouldn't have to deal with the things that would make his visit less joyful. He wanted a joyful visit. He wanted an enjoyable visit with the Corinthians where he could uh, be with them in a good spirit so that he could rejoice with them over the returning of someone who had been in sin. He wanted, them, he wanted to be able to do all of that. But he couldn't do that if there was sin to correct in the church as the whole. That reminds us too. We all the time want to be uh, in a good spirit among our brethren. We go visit a church and that, that maybe we've worked at in the past and we want it to be a good time. But if we know that that church has gone into error and I go visit that church, I better... I better make them realize that they're not following the Word of God. I can't go to them and be in a joyful attitude and know that they're in error. That's not loving. Paul here is saying, you're in error, you need to correct it. I want to come in a joyful spirit, correct it so I can do that. But if you don't, know this, I'm going to come and I'm going to come in a spirit of correction so that you know what the Word of God is, and so that you know that if you don't do it, you're not going to be saved. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12. In the next episode, we're going to cover 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to go through verses 1 and 2. This is the last chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians, and so it's going to give Paul's final thoughts uh, and his closing remarks later on in the chapter, and we hope you will join us for that episode. Perhaps you're listening and you're not a Christian. The brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts, as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.